What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. This is a Red E Hustle, also known as Eric, also known as Mr. Fajita. And as you can see, I got a nice new hat on. If you would like to learn how to make this hat without a multi-needle, please stick around and watch this video. Not only are we gonna be making this hat, but it's gonna be in Puff 3D, so we're gonna add a little something special to it, because anyone can make a hat, a patch, and just throw it on a hat, so. Hopefully you guys like what you see, um, if you do, Leave a like, sub, drop a comment, tell me what you guys think, and share with a friend. All right, let's go. Okay guys, so I have uh, done some trial runs. As you can see, I already have a hat finished. But here are some uh, patches I worked on. This one has the puff embroidery done to it. But um, as you can see, the spacing wasn't great. And then this one, that was an epic fail. We accidentally used this on a terror ray stabilizer and it just ripped out. So, uh, hopefully, we can do better. I already uh, fixed the file, so that one should be ready to go. I'll go ahead and show you what we're doing before we uh, stitch it out. You know, Eric is such a big hat buff, I guess you could say. Yeah, I love my hats. Uh, he loves his hats. So, basically, what we're planning on doing is because we don't got a multi needle, but we want to make hats, so we're trying to find a way to make it work. You know, like how Angela says, you gotta make it happen. <laughs> so hopefully, it'll give the look of it being an embroidered hat, but really, it's just a patch on a hat. So, we're trying to figure it out. We don't know. We're still doing our we're research. Gonna it out. Well, yeah, we're gonna make it happen. We're just trying to figure out what's gonna be the best way and the best look and the best quality. This is like a big dream of ours is to be able to, you know have our own hat line, I guess. Like, how sick would that be? But if we can figure this out and, you know, get a couple cells and make some money off some hats, too, that's getting us closer to our Melco. So we're going to figure this out, guys. And we're going to show you guys, too, because I want you to figure it out, too, and be able to make some cool stuff. Um, it's set up to do puff embroidery, uh, satin stitches, and I adjusted the pull compensation and the amount of stitches. So it should be good. Looks like I spaced it out more, and I'm hoping this one is the money shot. So we'll find out together. All right, guys, so what we're going to be hooping up, um, we got cutaway stabilizer. Yes, cutaway, not tearaway. Need to give me the wrong one last time. and. It all went downhill. So, we'll just hoop this up real quick. What? Okay. You guys, you guys heard it here first. I'm showing her how to do this too since I'm the master now. And as you can see, screwdriver to get this thing nice and tight. Okay. And then. We're just gonna place some uh, some black fabric down. That's how I do it. All right, let's go ahead, throw this on the embroidery machine, and get going. Okay, it's loaded up, ready to go. I got my thread ready. I threaded it myself. Only took one try, and my design is ready. As you can see, it is a. Hopefully, you can see it. Is a 43 minute stitch out. So I have two uh, black threads going on in a row. The first one is going to do some uh, detail stuff that's not going to be puff embroidery. The next one, 22 minute long, that's going to be the puff embroidery. So I want to make sure I get the details done first and then I add the puff. 
All right, so now I'm gonna throw on my foam. I'm gonna cut it down to size. So I got my foam. Uh, I cut it a little bit bigger because not only are the wordings gonna be puff, but also the outer border of the patch. So we're just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna raise this up, slide it on in, lower it down, and uh, away we go. Okay, I thought I'd remove the foam on camera with you guys. I gotta be careful, I still got one more thing to stitch out, so I don't want it to be all crazy. Ooh, yeah, fireworks or gunshots going off. So it'd be better to do this with a heat gun. What this does, it just kind of tightens up the uh, puff 3D and it keeps the patch from fraying on the sides. Alright guys, well what do you think? Now it's hard to see but there's some foam in there and I'm just I'm just gonna leave it, forget it. It's too tight in there. I don't know for future ones to leave a little bit more spacing, even in those certain areas. Or, um, we're thinking about using fabric instead of stitches. Uh, maybe if it was fabric, I, I could scrape in there a little bit more and get it out. But um, I don't want to rip up stitches either, so. It's gonna be interesting heat pressing this. I'm not sure how well it's gonna do because of the foam, but there's only one way to find out, guys. Okay guys, so I'm trying to show him how to use heat and bond. And I was telling him like we have to we need to cut a piece small enough for this. And he was about to go ahead and grab my fabric scissors. I thought those were crafting scissors. No. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Isn't that fabric? Mm-mm. That's not like a type of fabric right there. I can't. I can't, guys. You can't what? Alright. What are you doing? I'm cutting with normal scissors, not my fabric scissors. Hey! So we're using Heat and Bond Ultra, and don't mind my blanket. Are I'm, you Batman? I'm Batman tonight. Um, we're going to iron right here. Now, Heat and Bond Ultra has like two sides. It has like a really bumpy side and then a smooth side. The bumpy side is gonna stick to whatever you want it to stick to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then the smooth side, that's the side we're going to iron on. And um, once we are done ironing it onto the patch, we'll then peel off this paper piece. Hopefully that made sense. I guess we should uh, get that iron heating up. Yeah, get to work. Where is it? Babe, it started steaming. Dang it. Guys, it started steaming. I didn't even hit the steam button. I probably messed it all up. Never in my life has steam ever just came out of the iron. So now, guys, you're gonna peel it off. Peel it off. And do the edges a little bit more. Who irons on an island? I left the tag on in case I uh, mess up, I just go return it. 
if it works that way. Okay, so after I heat, after I get the heating bond onto the patch, we're gonna heat press it onto the hat. So what I need to do, get this bad boy to the heat press, or to the hat press. So I'm gonna do this off camera, but if you wanna know how to do it, I will be uploading a video on just that exact process. So you can check that out. Okay guys, so need to help me get that patch all situated. Here it is. It's ready to go. I uh, got the hat loaded up on the tray. Now this is my first time heat pressing anything, so we'll see how it all goes. Now you want to leave it on for a little bit just to warm up the hat. And then we'll place this and hopefully uh, it'll be all lined up and come out straight. Okay, so I decided just to take that same spray that we use to stick stuff and put it on that way, just so it'll stay in place. Okay, so it looks like it's still lined up nicely. worried about this and the heat press uh, was that puff embroidery because it uses plastic foam it definitely shrunk up a little bit maybe it'll come back I'm not sure and then it left these little wrinkles that's super annoying okay well there we have it the heat press did leave some wrinkles in the hat. Hopefully those come out. But it's a hat. And it's puff embroidery. So if you're gonna do puff embroidery with a patch like this, I would either you know use fabric glue or just hand sew it down. We could even use hot glue. I'm not sure how long it will last, but um it definitely sucked away all the uh all the puff. Flattened it right out. Still looks good though. Okay, well, there you have it, guys. Now, do I think this is better than using a Melco? Nah, probably not. But can you get it done with a single needle? Absolutely. So if you have no choice, this is an option for you guys. Um, let's see, what would I do different? I don't see the puff. I don't know if you guys can see the puff. Definitely shrunk down because of the heat press. But I think it still looks pretty cool. Um, I did get some creases up here. Which I think if I just put a little heat on the inside, it will straighten right out. I'll use my wife's little tool she has that she burns everything with. But, there you guys have it. Hope you uh, learned something. I know I'm learning. Every video I do, I learn tons. So, uh, learn through my mistakes so you don't have to make these mistakes. And we all win. Alright guys, well, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, like the video. Sub. Let me know what your favorite part is. Let me know if you want to see how to digitize puff embroidery just so... You know, maybe that's something I could add for you guys to learn from. Uh, share this video with a friend. And like I said, if you like the video, please like the video. 
All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Nope.